Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today, I want to have a conversation with you about Bus by Splatter Games. This game was published in 1999, before the decade of incredible titles we've had coming out across Kickstarter. This is a game that came out before every other game that is in my top 10 and likely my top 100 list. And yet, Bus here, now granted this is the 20th anniversary edition, this is the updated edition, but Bus here is still remaining at my number one of all time. You see, I did my first top 10 list last year, and Bus made it to the top. And I had some people, I had some friends very close to me that were shocked at that decision. Why was it there? Why did it beat out other games that were on that list as well? Games like The Great Wall, uh, or games like Blood Rage. Right? Why did it beat out Terraforming Mars? And yet it did. And over this last year so far, I've been trying to dive back into the titles that are there on my top 10 to remind myself where they're positioned and why they're positioned there. We consume so many games here being a board game channel that at times you lose sight of, well, why games are on your personal shelf, why they're your favorites, what they did so great in their category or in their genre. and. Honestly, at times, some of those games get knocked out as well, because you'll play something that does it better, or does it different, or adds a theme that you like even more. And in this conversation, I want to walk you through what Bus is, how it operates, and why it's here as the perfect game for me. Both to give you a sense and a full review of my number one game, but also to let you know about my personal preferences, what's so special about this title, what I look for in board games, and why this one sings on so many levels. Bus is a incredible game. It, it is an absolute remarkable one, but it arguably might not be right for every single person. Uh, but that being said, I have started playing this title, you've seen some gameplays here on the channel, with friends who were once skeptical of its position at the top of my list, and not a single person has said they hated this game. I've had some people say that it wasn't their favorite of all time, I've had some that say it's risen high in their books, and I've had others that have went out to seek, find, and purchase this incredibly hard to find game. You see, the 20th anniversary edition here is still available, but only really at a higher and extended price. And the original bus, which some of the components do come in this box, the original bus is near impossible to get your hands on. So, Bus by Splutter Games. Let's have a conversation about why it is here. Bus, at the heart and soul of it, is going to be a route building game. It's sort of worker placement, but it's also sort of pick up and deliver. Throughout the course of the game, you're going to be programming your actions over here on this action selection turn, and then you'll be order ordering or uh, sequencing those, those actions in turn order down this line. What does that mean? The object of the game is to score as many points as possible before everyone runs out of their little action cubes which are limited. You score points by delivering people where they'd like to go. Someone that's leaving the office wants to go to the bar. Someone that's leaving the bar wants to go back home and someone that's leaving home wants to go to an office. You deliver people by running a room on your bus route here on the city map. And of course, you have to have the corresponding locations connected to where you're going to be running, and you have to have pedestrians there available for you to pick up and drop off. Now, if someone's adjacent to a location that they want to go to, they're going to self-deliver, which takes them off the route. So the puzzle of it is positioning people so that you can take them to their destination and then make them leave where they want to go next time. It's a back and forth. It's like a dance here on the board, trying to be as efficient as possible with your actions, with your route building, with your movement, and when you decide to take an action. Now, the way the actions will actually work will be over here on this programming slot. Programming is going to be done, well, in turn order, one after another after another, starting with a starting player who could take that position from this location down here. You're going to start with line expansion. Line expansion is going to be, well, growing your route. Then you'll have buses. Buses are going to be how many of any one action comes out. For instance, up here in line expansion, you're going to be able to place two lines if there's two buses on this track here. And it's determining on whoever has the most buses. So even though yellow will only have one, green has two, you'll still place two lines because of green. Passengers is gonna to relate to buses as well. 
passengers will be how many little meeples pop out here onto the board, and it's gonna be the same idea. Whoever has the most buses will determine the amount or the number of passengers that get played out. Buildings are gonna be the locations that people wanna to go to, bars, houses, and uh, offices. These will have to come out on the corresponding round number, the ones filling up first, then twos, then threes, then fours, and they'll go out. Again, if there are two green buses, that means there's two buildings being placed down on the board. Buildings can be used strategically uh, to make someone's route less efficient or to make your own route able to deliver that round. We're gonna have the time continuum, which we'll get to in a little bit, and then we're gonna have the vroom action. The vroom action is how you actually run your buses, picking people up off of their locations and moving them to their next destination. That's how you score actual victory points. And let me be clear, victory points in this game, even though the track goes up to 20, 12 is a very solid score, and eight may be a winning round. Just throwing that out there. So, there's another thing that relates to buses up here. You can vroom the amount of buses that you have. Buildings, passengers, and line expansion go out determined on the highest number of buses available, and then sequencing. Whoever takes the action first, second, or third. For instance, up here on line expansion, green takes it first, and then blue goes second. Well, blue will only get to place one line, or blue would only get to spawn one passenger, or blue would only get to place one building. Why would that be? Well, the very first person to act gets to do everything. Second person gets to only do the uh, uh, number listed, minus one, and then minus two, and then minus three, so on and so forth. So all of these become less powerful the earlier you're going to be actually activating and taking them. Now the other interesting thing is going to be the fact that these change. So A starts here for passengers and A starts here for buildings. You're still going to resolve them left to right, but whoever is positioned there is going to get the advantage. Uh, so it's another little bit of a puzzle. Same thing down here for room, A starts here at the front. So with line expansion, the person who's playing the, le the least number of lines is going to get to play first. Here with passengers, person who's playing the most passengers out get to play them first down. Buildings, the least number of buildings, like yellow in this case, or blue here, would get to go first. And Vroom, whoever played there first, will get to go first. After everyone's taken their actions and passed, meaning that one person could be taking more actions than anyone else during this round, you'll resolve this from top to bottom. Placing out lines, upgrading your buses by placing another bus down on the track, placing out passengers, adding buildings to the map, then coming down to room where you run your buses, scoring whatever points you're able to score, depending on what avail which available passengers are there for you to pick up and drop off, and then determining who the starting player is going to be. Now there is one big twist in this game, that I haven't gone over yet. That is going to be the time continuum, continuum here. This time meter is a location where one person can go. And then when you get to the time clock, they could decide to take a stone and halt time. Well, what does that mean? This dial here controls where people are going to want to go next. If they're in offices currently, when it gets down to this round, it's going to move on to bars. And then suddenly everyone is leaving their work and going to, the, to grab a drink. If you go here, you could tell everyone that we're working an extra long day, meaning you put a hold on this, you uh, take a stone, which is minus one point at the end of the game, but it is also the tiebreaker if you're tied, and everyone stays. Why does that matter? Well, everyone that is already at a location they wanna go to self-delivers. If they're already at work, they don't need to hop on the bus, they're gonna deliver themselves. And if they're coming out of the bar, they're gonna be going right back in. Which means the people who have spent their actions building for the next round, which might be bars, might be cost two or three points, which is major in this game. You, the player who pulled that lever, may be able to take advantage of that, scoring some points of your own, siphoning people off of these different hubs that are available here. And in the next round, you might be better prepared for going to bars or going to homes or going to offices, depending on where it ends up. So that's a general overview. I don't know if that's the perfect overview of the game, a little disjointed, but uh, I will continue with the conversation about this video. So let's talk about 
what I love about Bus, why it is my number one game. This game is nearly, if, if not a perfect game for me. I, I honestly think the only major criticism I have over it that I'm aware of is that it doesn't play two player. It's a three to five player game with a preference at the three to four player range. Uh, and personally, I would love to see some sort of system developed for this that allows it to function at two players, but it's not necessary and it's not necessarily necessary. Uh, as far as a three and four player game, I don't know of another game that I would rather get off the shelf and play. Now, does that mean I'm always playing bus only and solely? No. I love a wide variety of games and I'm not always looking for this dynamic or this mechanic, but I'm always excited and always happy to play bus, especially with a new group of people. So let's talk about why it's so good. First and foremost, Bus is, as far as I've described it, one of the most elegant games I've ever played. It is clean, well presented, easy to read, easy to teach, and easy to get up and running with a insane amount of depth to the mechanics and strategy in it, and, and I love a game like this. I find a lot of the Splatter games actually work like this. Simple in application, but the depths of strategy is just universally deep. And Bus is this to an epitome. Every single action here is straightforward and easy to understand, but figuring out the puzzle, the interaction on the board with other players, and where you can build your routes or who's going to screw you over from turn to turn makes this such an inviting game. No game that I play feels exactly the same, and there's always a new puzzle I'm trying to solve. It's a game that keeps me invested in the game for the entire duration. <clears throat> and personally, that's something that I look for in games. I really love games that don't have a lot of downtime. They don't have it be just a personal puzzle where I'm solving my own solo adventure. Instead, I like games that have high interaction on the game board, uh, or at least enough interaction that it matters to me what other people are doing on their turn. That's the case here with Bus. This is really an easy teach. It does take a little bit of... Uh, I'd say a run to understand, and really by the second game you'll be able to grasp the full strategy of it and dive headfirst into it. Usually around the middle part of the game people start having a moment where they click and they go, oh, I just messed up the first half of this game, but this is so cool and I'm so excited to play again. And then we'll either restart from zero if they want to or we'll continue playing to see if they can counterbalance any of the mistakes they've made up to that point. So there's that. But there's also some other elements here that make it highly elegant. I love the brand new design in the, in the 20th edition, uh, but outside of that, the way the programming actually works, there's a total of one, two, three, four, five core actions in this game. Unlike some programming in games like Dominant Species, which have a very similar track to this, I find this to be way more accessible and way cleaner, without a lot of upkeep or nuance happening on the board. Along with that, the object of the game is very simple. Get people where they want to go, and every round feels the same. You know exactly where people are going. There's perfect information here. The only difference is going to be if people take actions that hurt or help you. And I love that about this game as well. It is, at its heart and soul, a route building game. Now, some people have described it as the first ever worker placement game because you are playing workers to take actions. You're holding your spot. I don't know that I entirely give it that genre, uh, but I could see where people are coming from and due to its publication date, it is right there on the front end of worker placement games being produced. Now, I also love the theme. Those of you that are watching this channel know that I'm, I'm a big thematic player and a lot of my favorite games are actually games that are super heavy when it comes to art, lore, thematic depth, and I think there's a few things that are helping bus out here when it comes. I, one, grew up with the Magic School Bus, and I can't help but reminisce on that TV show when I play this game. It makes sense to me that we're diving and zooming and picking people up. It's almost like a class of school kids hopping onto this big old yellow bus and zooming around the city. For me, I, I think that is uh, accurate. Now, is it accurate to what the actual theme of the game is? No, it's not, and honestly, big yellow buses, the only ones that I'm aware of, should be delivering people to school, sports, and home, or something along those lines, because I've never been to a city that has big yellow buses as their cornerstone, as the things that are delivering people around. I could be wrong, but let me know. Here in the United States, big yellow buses are used specifically for school. But the combination with the time travel mechanic here 
uh, which I find highly entertaining because it creates this ambient threat that someone's going to pull a lever and switch the entire puzzle of the game. In combination with that and the fact that people are just going randomly to brand new offices, brand new houses, this to me is sort of a topsy-turvy, upside-down city. And I have fun imagining who's just walking into an office or strolling into a new bar or new home they've never seen. This feels like a weird environment. And while the theme doesn't come through heavily in every application, for me, it also isn't a ding against it. I find the art and the aesthetics charming. I find the gameplay interesting and compelling. And I grew up with a bit of nostalgia that still makes me favor this game above potentially others. Now, when it comes to the core mechanics of bus, route building is the main kind of system here and the programming. And I love the way the game works with both of these applications. The routes have to be streamlined and efficient. You can cut people off. There's a lot of dirty play here on the board, but you can usually find your way around the board if you need to get to somewhere specific. I like how the game challenges you to think about how to build, when to build, and where to go down other people's tracks. It works incredibly well, and again, is one of the cleanest applications of that concept that I've ever seen. The programming here is highly, highly contentious and crunchy, specifically because I believe you have 20 total cubes when you start the game. And out of these 20 cubes, you never get any back, meaning every action you take throughout the course of this game is determined, specific, and if you waste an action, you're wasting a significant part of your playing space. I find that so, so interesting. I, I love the fact that you're limited in the amount of total actions you can take, but not limited in when and how you can take them. I'll find that sometimes I finish a game two or three turns ahead of other players, or vice versa. And sometimes that works out in my favor, and sometimes that leaves the door open for them to score a ton of points on the last one or two rooms. As you get more familiar with this, every time you place down one of these cylinders, you're making a real tactical decision. Is that cylinder worth the action that I just took? Is one route right now worth spending a turn? And that's important. And I love this. I love how limiting and how crucial every single one of these cylinders feels. And when you pull this lever, making time stop, and you cost someone three or four of their cylinders, you're costing someone potentially, I don't know, 10, 20% of their total gameplay. That is fun. It is cruel but it also makes everything you do feel crunchy and important. Now, I also love that a great score in this game is anything above 10. I mean, that could be the winning score. It means every time you deliver someone, every point that you take, if you're only able to vroom and deliver one person or you spend multiple vrooms trying to deliver two or three, that could be the game. That could ensure it for you. It's not one of these games where you score 738 points and it's hard to keep track of. No, I can count out and see perfectly that George is about to score four points, I'm about to score three, and I'm not going to quite be there. Maybe I pull the lever. Maybe I don't. Maybe I wait for next turn. Maybe my cylinders are not being as effective and efficient as they need to be. This point scoring track over here is an incredible, incredible mechanic. Because, like I said, Everything you do here feels important. Every cylinder I put down, every route I build, every person that might be stolen by another player, every building that either benefits me or doesn't benefit me, as the board starts expanding, as you start filling in the one zones and the two zones, and you start being able to build in new, different, interesting places, and every point I score matters to the end of the game. On top of all of that, bus plays in roughly about 60 minutes. On the side of the box here, it claims about two hours, and I'm gonna be honest, three player games finish within about an hour. I can see a four player game playing a little bit longer, but they have to be giving some generous time there for people to have a little bit of AP. Once they're up and running with this game, two hours, maybe at four or five players would be about maximum. Now, there is an opportunity for high AP in this game, and there is also an opportunity for people to have a king-making environment, where you do something that specifically prevents someone from having the winning score. I would say that those are two potential negatives for bus. I don't love the idea of kingmaking, and when it does happen in bus, I do find it to be sometimes anticlimactic, but oftentimes it's in response to something that you did throughout the course of the game, meaning you're paying the price that you set before the other players. But yeah, plays quick, easy to learn, 
mechanics are immersive and important. Everything I do throughout the course of the game matters to me and matters to the players around the board. Uh, the theme for me sings with a bit of nostalgia and a lot of bright, wonderful colors. This game is lovely. It is. And, and hopefully now, after this video of me rambling about why I like it so much, you maybe understand my personal taste in games a little bit better, and you understand why Bus is at number one. Now, as far as moving on to my 2022 top 20 or top 50 list, we're going to have to see what we decide to do. As far as moving on, Bus is hard-pressed to move out of that number one zone. I... In my play up to this point, I have not found a game that challenges Bus in its positioning and its accessibility and in how good of a time I have with every play. Now, for note, I did remove Kingdom Death from that list. Kingdom Death is my number zero game. I have too much nostalgia for it. It's what introduced me into the hobby, and I don't think it's fair to have a game that, uh, outside of its own merit, can never leave your number one position. Bus is fully ready and willing to be challenged. I just haven't found something that does yet. And maybe I need to play Blood Rage more, or dive back into Bunny Kingdom, or give Root 12 more tries. But to be honest, in every one I could find something that I like a little bit less than I like Bus. And in Bus, every time I play it, I'm reminded why it's there. This is a game that has not exhausted itself, and I'm not sure it ever will. Every game I play, I'm invested, involved, and I can't wait to invite new people to the table. So, there we have it. That's my review of Bus. I know it's been a long time coming. We've had multiple gameplays up on the channel before we ever talked about it. But I just thought it was a good time to pop it open, sit down, and share with you my thoughts. So, with that being said, I'll see you next time. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.